In the words of another poet, sometimes love hurts. In exchange for a sum of money and as a favor to a friend, Petruchio has decided to court and marry Catherine, a wealthy woman with a reputation for putting men in their places. He prepares to meet her. Will Petruchio's brash style win over Kate, or will they both learn how much fun a good tongue lashing can be? I'll attend her here and woo her with some spirit when she comes. Say that she rail. Why then I'll tell her plain she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. Say that she frown. I'll say she looks as clear as morning roses newly washed with dew. Say she be mute and will not speak a word. Then I'll commend her volubility and say she uttereth piercing eloquence. If she do bid me pack, I'll give her thanks as though she bid me stay by her a week. If she deny to wed, I'll crave the day when I shall ask the bands and win be married. But here she comes. And now, Petruchio, speak. Good morrow, Kate. For that's your name, I hear. Well, have you heard that something hard of hearing? They call me Catherine that do talk of me. <laughs> you lie in faith, for you are called plain Kate, and Bonnie Kate, and sometimes Kate Curse, but Kate, prettiest Kate in Christendom, Kate of Kate Hall, my super dainty Kate, for dainties are all Kates, and therefore, Kate, take this of me, Kate of my consolation. Hearing thy mildness praised in every town, thy virtue spoke of, and thy beauty sounded, yet not so deeply as to thee belongs, myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. <laughs> moved in good time. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. I knew you at the first. You were immovable. Why? What's immovable? A joint stool. Thou hast hit it. Come, sit on me. <laughs> Asses are made to bear, and so are you. Women are made to bear. And so are you. No such jade as you, if me, you mean. Alas, good Kate, I will not burden thee, for knowing thee to be but young and light. Too light for such a swain as you to catch, and yet as heavy as my weight should be. Should be, should buzz. <laughs> well taken, and like a buzzer. Come, come, you wasp, in faith you are too angry. If I be waspish, best beware my sting. My remedy is then to pluck it out. <laughs> I, if the fool could find where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp does wear a sting? In his tail. In his tongue. Whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tails. And so, farewell. What, with my tongue in your tail? Hey, <laughs> come again, good Kate. I am a gentleman. That I'll try. <sighs> I swear I'll cuff you if you strike again. So you may lose your arms? If you strike me, you are no gentleman, and... If no gentleman, why then no arms? What is your crest? A cock's comb? A combless cock, so Kate will be my hen? No cock of mine. You crow too like a crate. Nay, come, Kate, come. You must not look so sour. Well aimed of such a young one. Now, by St. George, I am too young for you. Yet you are withered. Tis with cares. I care not. Nay, hear you, Kate. In sooth, you speak not so. I chafe you if I tarry. Let me go. No, not a whit. I find you passing gentle. T'was told me you were rough and coy and sullen, and now I find report a very liar. For thou art pleasant, gamesome, passing courteous, but slow in speech, yet sweet as springtime flowers. <laughs> thou canst not frown. Thou canst not look askance, nor bite the lip as angry wenches will, nor hast thou pleasure to be cross in talk, but thou with mildness entertains thy wooers with gentle conference, soft and affable. 
Why does the world report that Kate doth limp? Oh, slanderous world. Kate, like the hazel twig, is straight and slender and as brown in hue as hazelnuts and sweeter than the kernels. <sighs> Let me see thee walk. Go, fool, in whom thou keep'st command. Be thou Diane, and let her be Kate. And then let Kate be chaste, and Diane sportful. Where did you study all this goodly speech? It is extempore from my mother wit. A witty mother, witless else her son. Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. Mary, so I mean, sweet Catherine, in thy bed. And therefore, setting all this chat aside, now Kate, I am a husband for your turn. For by this light, whereby I see thy beauty, thy beauty that doth make me like thee well, thou must be married to no man but me, for I am he, am born to tame you, Kate, and bring you from a wild Kate to a Kate conformable, as other household Kates. I must and will have Catherine to my wife. We will have rings and things and fine array and kiss me, Kate. We will be married Sunday. 